So everybody has an opinion on whether or not you should leave your system on or off or whether you need to give it warm up time and if so, how long. Everybody has a different take on it. But what about actually unplugging your system? What does that do for the sound quality? And does it screw it up? We're about to find out. So warm up and burn in are two separate things, but it seems like everybody's got an opinion on it and everybody thinks they're an expert on it. And here's my take on it. It's reflects my take on just about everything that I believe audio file wise. It really depends on your gear, your room and your ears. If anybody is arrogant enough to suppose they can tell you what you can and can't hear and what is and is not hearable for, for lack of a better word or audible for lack of a better word. I just have no inclination or desire to talk to people like that because everybody's ears are so different that nobody knows. It's like somebody trying to tell you what you're feeling. Nobody can do that. So now that we've got that out of the way, let me briefly talk about uh, burning and what I've done to my gear first. And then we're going to talk about kind of the topic of the day, which is warm up time. And what happens if you actually unplug your gear? Is it any different than if you shut off your gear? Como éramos felices. So from a burn in point of view, Different gear, in my experience, has required different amounts of time. There is no magic number. My Rupert Neve, uh, for, for those who aren't familiar with that, they are the, a lot of the uh, recording consoles that you see in, in studios. They are legendary. I actually have their gear in my studio, in my mixing room, love their stuff. And I use their headphone amplifier for the few times that I use headphones, which is not very often. That unit was more unique in some of the other stuff that I've heard that between 12 and, and 25, almost up to 50 hours was a dramatic difference of burn in. And, and then that pretty much peaked off from there. Other gear and other cables that I've experienced require different amounts of burn in time. For instance, I've had three Luxman pieces and every single one was right about 375 hours, you know, 250, 275, they started to open up, but at 375, it was like a light switch that that is where the biggest difference is, whether it be their solid state or their tube models. The Aqua La, St La Scala tube deck that I have, that 800 hours before it really sounded good. It was, uh, it was a long 800 hours. <laughs> Typically what I do, the way I do burn in is I will listen to it at zero hours and then I listen to it typically in 25 hour increments, 25, 50, 75. And I don't listen to it in between. I'll go listen to other stuff in between. That way I don't get accustomed or used to how the sound is. Instead, I'm coming back to it almost with a, with a fresh take each time. I enjoy that process. Uh, it can be sometimes a time consuming process like with the uh, Aqua La Scala, you know, 800 hours is a lot. Uh, in fact, what I ended up doing is I put the 800 hours on the original factory tubes. And then once I hit that, I replaced them with the new old stock mullards that I put in there and I gave them about 100 hours to burn in. So I, I put the use on, on the factory stock tubes and then I put them in a box, set them off to the side. So yes, different components need different amounts of burn time. Uh, my Klipsch La Scala speakers, 400 hours. They needed 400 hours before they really kind of opened up and, and loosened up and sounded more musical. My guess is the reason why those speakers needed so much time, more time than a lot of other speakers, is because they're so efficient and the drivers move so little uh, to get any type of real volume that 
they needed an exponential amount of time because they were moving so little that it was simply a matter of they weren't exercising as much as more traditional speakers where you'd have more cone excursion and, and, and they'd be working harder for normal volume levels. It's just my guess. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know. It sounds logical to me. But now let's talk about, you know what, before we do that, I've got an idea. Let's, you know, everybody, it, it seems like no matter what movie or TV show you watch nowadays, there's always a, a gratuitous, uh, sensual, steamy scene. I think now's the time for a gratuitous shot of gear and cables. So you know what I'm currently running because we are going to be having some upgrades coming soon that I'm very excited about. So, so let me get out of the way and we'll show that. I'll show you what we're running right now and including some stuff which has not been reviewed yet, which will be coming up. And then I'll come right back and I'll talk to you about the, uh, the whole power down, power up and warm up thing. All right, here we go. Okay, we're back. And while you were looking at that, I was off having my, my iced coffee break. So I had uh, actually unplugged the gear because I had gotten a, uh, some new cables to try and some new gear and I had unplugged it. It was only supposed to last one day and I was gonna come back to it. I hurt my neck. That put me out for about six weeks. So it ended up staying unplugged for close to four or five weeks. And what's interesting is that I have experimented with actual warm up time up till now. I tried with the Luxman and the La Scala uh, tube DAC and my streamer. I found that if I turned it on from cold and I just let it run idle, nothing through it, it would take about two hours before it really kind of warmed up and sounded right and didn't sound uh, um, cold or analytical or anything like that. Then I decided to try something new. And as you can see, the sun's coming in my eyes now, so the clouds clearly have gone away. I said, okay, well, let's actually play music through it. I actually have the TV hooked up through it as a two channel system for the time I will watch uh, something that, uh, concert videos or something like that, I can play it through the system. So I said, okay, well, what I'm gonna do is now, I'm going to just run some music through it, run a signal through it in essence, kind of warm everything up. And I found that that only takes between 30 and 45 minutes before it sounds ready to go, which is much faster than if I just turn it on and let it sit there. What's interesting is different components require different times. My uh, favorite dealer that I do a, do a lot of uh, business with, ultra high-end dealer, he would talk about name gear and how name would take typically, they just leave it on 24 seven because if they lose power in the store or whatever, it will take a couple of weeks for it to come back. I experienced that when I was running name gear as well. So you leave that on 24 seven. But what happens if you unplug it completely? Because right now, all my gear is in a standby mode. So it's not completely 100% power off. I honestly did not think there would be any difference. So when I plugged my gear back in, I thought it would be like coming back from a standby mode. I actually, this time, gave it a little bit longer. I put a signal through it and I ran it for two to three hours to let it warm up again, from a completely unplugged state, 
power conditioner was unplugged. Therefore, there was no signal, no power going to anything. It was horrible. It absolutely was. I was like, there's something wrong with my system. What's going on? I couldn't believe it. So what I did is after about 15 or 20 minutes, it was unlistenable. I just said, that's it, enough with it. So I shut it down. I left everything in the, in the warm up state, in, in, in the standby state. And I checked it over the course of several days. It took a full week, a full seven days of the power running through everything, even in a standby mode, before it reached a point of how it had sounded before. And I thought that was really interesting because I never thought, first of all, if somebody told me this, I would have thought, okay, yeah, you guys are nuts. If I didn't hear it with my own ears, I would not have believed it. So completely unplugging everything, which means that there's nothing running through here, even in standby mode, because in standby mode, there's always still current running through it. It, it threw everything out of, out of whack as a very technical term, throwing everything out of whack, but it was, it was not pleasant to listen to. So I thought that was really interesting. Seven days from when I plugged everything back in till it reached a point. And even at the seven days, it was only about 90% what it had been before. So it took close to a full 10 days before I really got to where I needed to be, which was in the previous thing. And I couldn't do any uh, reviews in that 10 days. I couldn't do any critical listening because everything was just so off. So really interesting. I'm curious if you've tried anything like that. If not, try it. Tell me what your experience is. Uh, put in the comments down below what your experience is on. Obviously, if you have a tube amp, you can leave it in standby. I would not recommend you leave a tube amp on 24 seven for a whole host of reasons. Solid state. I do know some of my friends, some of my higher end buddies, they, they do leave their stuff on 24 seven. We're here in Texas. It's not uncommon for us to lose power. In fact, frankly, we lose power fairly often here in Texas, especially with all the storms that come through. So what I do is I do shut stuff off. If I'm out of town, I actually unplug the power conditioner at the wall. And if we do have a storm coming, I will actually come and again, unplug everything from the wall, but that's typically only a couple of hours and then we plug it back in. It wasn't the length of time before. So let me know what your experience is. Try it, I'm curious and we'll see you in the next one.